Go. Konnichiwa. Welcome to <laughs> Okay. Welcome to our presentation about Japanese Canadian immigrants. Today we will be showing you our presentation about Jap about the history of Japanese Canadian immigrants. We hope you learn a lot while also enjoying some Zagoy and Kawaii pictures. Why did these people come to Canada in the first place? Many Japanese immigrants came to Canada for many different reasons. Japanese women came to reunite with their husbands or to even find a husband. During World War II, there was not enough food in Japan because of a blockade. A blockade is when an area is blocked and no one can enter or leave. Numerous Japanese came to grow food. Also, in Japan, there were many threats to its citizens. Some examples are, in 1904, the Russian-Japanese War began. The Russian Empire and the Japanese Empire fought over Manic Kura and Korea. In 1937, the second senior Japanese war begins. Japanese military members and Chinese military members met and had a dispute and fought with each other. In 1945, there was a fire bombing in Tokyo. Many were killed, and there was an atomic bombing in Hiroshima, Hiroshima and the Soviet Union started a war with the Japan people. Where did they originally settle? Many settled in the suburbs in Vancouver, B.C. on farms in the Fisher Valley. The Fisher Valley is located in southern west B.C. Also, some came to fishing areas and mining town near the Pacific coast. Some Japanese settled in Alberta, specifically Edmonton and Lethbridge. How did they get here? Many of the early immigrants, including the Japanese, traveled to Canada using boat or ship. When did they first start? When did they first start arriving? The first known Japanese person to come to Canada was Nanzo Nagano, who came to Canada in 1877. After the first Japanese immigrant came, the Issei, or first wave of immigrants, arrived. The arrivals stretched from from 1877 to 1928. After 1928, any Japanese person that came to Canada was not considered an Issei. Any children of the Issei were called the Nisei, meaning the second wave of immigrants and the children of the Nisei are called the Sansei, which means the third wave. What contributions did they make to building Canada? Japan has contributed to Canada in many ways. Some of Canada's most famous educators are Japanese, such as David Suzuki. Also, there are many famous Japanese Canadian actors and actresses. This next one isn't really them building Canada, but they did bring Kawaii and Mangar, which you have to admit is really cool and appealing to the eye. Um, they also brought a whole new culture to Canada, which we will be talking about more later. What struggles did they face? Like many others back in the day, Japanese Canadians faced racial discrimination and were given very limited job opportunities. They were not allowed to have certain jobs, even if they had a full education and met all of the job requirements. This made it incredibly hard to make a living. What percent of the Canadian population do they amount for? Where are they found typically? According to the 2005 Canadian census, 0.1% of the entire Canadian population is Japanese. They are found typically in western provinces because they sail across the Pacific Ocean from Japan to Canada. What percent of Brantonians originate from this area? 0.1% of Brantonians originate from Japan. This is most likely because that they decided to remain in the western provinces of Canada. What interesting cultural aspects are available to Canadians thanks to this group? There is a cooperative relationship between Canada and Japan. This cooperative relationship allows countries to remain in permanent contact with each other. They um, the two countries make deals and negotiate things like items of trade. Things from Japanese culture like food, folk tales, and art are also available in Canada thanks to the J Japanese. Thank you for listening all about the early Japanese immigrants. Hope you learn more about the citizens that helped build Canada. Sayonara! Sayonara.